this is Ness back again to talk more about human rights. As a reminder, human rights are rights that everyone has, regardless of what race you are, what sex or gender you are, what country you're from, what religion to practice, um, and also including no matter whether or not you have a disability. Probably the most well-known list of human rights that exists is the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. The UN Declaration of Human on Human Rights, sorry, the UN Declaration on Human Rights is a list that was compiled by representatives from many different countries of rights that they believe that everyone in the world should have. But unfortunately, the human rights outlined in the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights are sometimes different from the legal rights recognized by governments of different countries, even if those countries are represented in the United Nations. So not everyone in the world is protected in the way that the United Nations believe they should be. In the United States, where I live, not every right in the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights is fully guaranteed and protected. And people in certain situations might have more or less protections depending upon what state they live in. This week, I'm gonna focus my talk on rights regarding housing and shelter. Housing and shelter rights are an area where the laws in the United States differ somewhat from the human rights listed in the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Article 25 of the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights says everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of themselves and of their family, including food, clothing, housing and medical care, and necessary social services, and the right to security in the event of unemployment, sickness, disability, widowhood, old age, or other lack of livelihood in circumstances beyond their control. This means the United Nation believes it's a right to have whatever you need to stay safe and healthy, including food to eat, shelter, clothing, and medical care. But in the United States, there is no explicit federal law guaranteeing the right to shelter. Laws differ from state to state. In Massachusetts, you may be able to access emergency shelter if you're a homeless adult, but access to shelter in the event of homelessness is only guaranteed for families with children. And even in that case, there are many laws and restrictions that make this right not absolute. Many states also don't have enough space in shelters to house all of the people who are homeless. This does not mean that there aren't enough empty houses or other buildings to house all of the people who are homeless. It actually just means that these states don't allow people who are homeless to sleep in these places without paying rent. Because there are so many people in the United States who are homeless, and so many empty houses and other empty buildings, many people believe that the United States government is not doing enough to protect the right to shelter outlined in Article 25 of the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. However, in the United States, people without homes have the right to sleep outside and on public property if they're unable to access shelter. And it's not legal to fine or arrest people who do so. Importantly, the court ruled that this doesn't only mean that you can't get arrested for sleeping in a public space if there are no spaces left in shelters, but also if you can't access shelters for other reasons, like if a shelter were to tell you that to stay there, you have to go to religious services for a religion that you um, don't believe in or don't otherwise practice, or that goes against your personal beliefs. This right is protected by a 2018 court case in which homeless people in Boise, Idaho, challenged the city's practice of arresting or fining people who were sleeping in public places, like sidewalks and park benches. The case went all the way to a federal court of appeals, which ruled that arresting people for sleeping outside was unconstitutional based on the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, which is the part of our Bill of Rights that protects against cruel and unusual punishment. Basically, the court believed that it's cruel and unusual to arrest or fine people just for being without a home. Because this case made it all the way to a federal court of appeals, this ruling applies everywhere in the United States. So basically, no matter what state you're in, if you're in the United States, it's not okay to arrest or fine you 
for sleeping outside in a public place if you're homeless and can't access a shelter. The state of Idaho challenged this again all the way at the Supreme Court in 2019, but the Supreme Court um, refused to change the ruling, which means that it is still the law everywhere in the United States. The United Nations Declaration on Human Rights also says that everyone in the world should be able to live free from discrimination. This applies to housing too. It's not okay for a landlord to discriminate against you if you're renting a home, and it's not okay for a real estate agent to discriminate against you if you're buying a home. These rights are protected in the United States under the Fair Housing Act. The Fair Housing Act is a federal law, meaning it's a law everywhere in the United States. Discrimination includes a lot of different things. One example of discrimination that wouldn't be okay based on the Fair Housing Act is if a landlord chose not to rent to someone just because that person had a disability. Another example would be saying that a home is not available to rent when a disabled person asks about it, but saying that it was available to rent when an able-bodied person asks about it. Um, a third example would be if a landlord sets different application requirements or lease terms for disabled applicants and tenants versus non-disabled or able-bodied applicants and tenants. Um, a final example is if someone writes an ad for housing and states a preference in their ad for what type of person should apply. So it would be discrimination for someone to write a housing ad saying that they only want able-bodied people to apply to live in their house. Unfortunately, the process of renting an apartment or buying a home is not always totally transparent, which means that someone selling a house or a landlord renting a property doesn't have to explain all of their choices or tell you everything they're doing. So even if you're pretty sure you're being discriminated against, it can be pretty hard to prove it. Homelessness and shelter rights, self-advocacy and disability justice are all really related because in the United States, people with disabilities are more likely to be homeless than people who don't have any disabilities. One reason for this is that people who have disabilities are somewhat more likely to be of low income. Some people with disabilities are unable to work or can only work part-time and get social security or SSI or SSDI for all or part of their income. And these programs usually only give people a few hundred dollars a month. Some people with disabilities rely on Medicaid or similar state-run health insurance programs like MassHealth in order to get care that's really necessary for them. And these programs usually require your income to be very low in order to qualify. Unfortunately, for some folks, these health insurance programs are really the only way to get medical care that allows them to be independent. Um, without these programs, this medical care is often really prohibitively expensive for folks. Many people with disabilities do qualify for subsidized housing, but unfortunately, there are often long waiting lists. Sometimes these barriers lead to homelessness or make it harder to find a home if you're already homeless. Also, even though it's illegal to discriminate against people with disabilities in housing, which we just learned about, not all landlords obey the law and not all people know their rights or have the resources sorry, to fight a landlord who's discriminating. That's why it's really important to know your rights. Um, so that's part of why we're doing this. Homelessness is an especially important issue to consider right now because coronavirus makes being homeless even more dangerous than it usually is. People who sleep in public places may not be able to limit their contact with other people as much as people who have homes to live in. Um, and a big part of how we're trying to slow the spread of coronavirus in the United States is really limiting our contact with other people, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, so for homeless folks, it's much harder to do that, which makes them much less safe. Also, um, some folks who sleep in shelters or public places rely on the bathrooms in restaurants and coffee shops and places like public libraries for some of their hygiene needs. Um, and a lot of those places are closed right now because of the coronavirus pandemic. And so think of it this way. If you live in a house, you can go to the bathroom or the kitchen to wash your hands anytime you want. Um, you can also shower anytime you want. 
folks who live in shelters or on the street may not have that kind of 24 seven access to places to wash their hands, places to take a shower. Um, and another way that we're being told to keep ourselves safe from coronavirus is to really wash our hands, wash ourselves really often. Um, so not having access to this would really increase your risk for getting sick. <laughs> That's all I have for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll try my very best to answer them. You're also free to um, send this page a private message if you have a question, a comment, a concern, or if you want support. Um, also, please let me know if there are any other human rights topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Catch me next week, Wednesday at 5.30, right here on Facebook for my next human rights talk. And make sure to check this page often as we post new content five days a week. Have a fabulous rest of your week and stay safe out there.